Thanks for staying with us. So on June 2nd, there was a protest, a peaceful protest actually, mobilized by black youths in Ireland as they joined the rest of the world in protesting against racism and, uh, and obviously the treatment of black people across the world. This was led by our own Lydie son, Kiton. Uh, we feel very, very proud. Is, uh, I think we have Lydie on the show. Good morning, Lydie. Are you there? Or oh, Kiton? Good morning, Mariah. Hi. Hi. Good to see Hi. you guys. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, Lydie. You see, when, when you told me that everybody's been talking to you, you've been speaking to different people, I said, nobody can talk to you like your view because this is I was home. Like, my people haven't called me. I, I felt like a bastard that had no parents. Where, where are my uh -huh. people? Ah, yeah, your I people. Like because the reason why our interview is, I mean, so we'll come to you. No, sorry about that. We have to have this uh, conversation first. <laughs> But the reason why it was important to talk to you like this is because not just because of what Keton did, but because we know the story, how Me it too. started. We know where, how, what, you were, what you went through in Lagos before you moved to Ireland. Oh, we saw God. Keton as, yes. a, as a practically Young. a little boy. <laughs> when he was, yes. We're going to show some pictures of him right now. So we know the struggles and, and we can almost imagine what you're feeling that the whole world is focused on Keton right now because of that bold and brave thing he did. So that's why I said nobody can talk to you like we can. Nobody can. <laughs> nobody can. can. Nobody can but, except for your view. Yeah, yes. so, but let me say hello to Keton. Keton, how are you? Good morning, how are you doing? Good, good. Are you on top of the world right now? <laughs> Uh, it feels that way for now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, enjoy it because you deserve it. Tell us exactly, um, you're, you're, you're friends with, um, with a few others and all three of you decided to plan this protest. Tell us why. Essentially, um, my friend Funto Joy planned the protest because he, seen the, he had seen the uh, turnout in Dublin and he kind of wanted to get his message out in Dundalk. So we felt that if we needed to, like, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. So if we wanted our message to be sent out to the people in Dundalk, we had to speak up on it because we're actually locals in Dundalk. So it would only make sense for them to actually understand what we say because it's coming from us. Okay, as a young person and understanding that you could be doing every other thing, like you could be playing games, you could be watching, binge watching, whatever it watching. is. And you decided to do this what motivated you to do it is it like your I, I, do you have any personal experience do you do you feel why would you want to support this course when you're not even in america so what was the reason when you live when you live in a in a country that isn't and predominantly yeah, it's not yeah it's not predominantly black or it's not even it's not originally a, a black country there's going to be racism and it's inevitable so i've experienced racism growing up and i've seen and i've seen firsthand what racism can do to a person so i had to get my message out there for all people to understand this is what happens when people are racist this is what happens when we can unite and dundalk united on the night on the day of the protest and it showed the, the power of unity because for us to get a message out to the rest of the world was truly really incredible can you give us one example of how you have been how racism has affected you i mean one on the two. football pitch um me, my friend, Moyo and Sean, people, the two others in the uh, photo where we always used to play football together and when we're beating a team or things like that, the opposing team would always use racial slurs against us and the team that we were on was predominantly black as well. So it'll affect the whole team and then it'll, it'll make us play with anger rather than playing with, uh, sportsmanship. with, sport, with sportsmanship. Hmm. Interesting. So let me come to your mom for a second. Hmm. Come to me, or oh, Moraya, come to me. <laughs> you see, um, as a mother, uh, yeah. raising these kids by yourself, um, yes. working with them and um, seeing them grow through this process. Tell me, how has it affected you? This, this, the, the fact that your son wanted to do this uh, protest, um, did you encourage him? Were you scared? Was it? Um, did you feel like you know what? Don't buy and face your own. No, go and do your work and leave this matter. It doesn't concern you. Or did you <laughs> say, oh, please go ahead? Overview. Tell us exactly. <laughs> Tell us how, how 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 as a mother, how what role you played in the, in this whole thing. Okay, I came back from London successfully after being stuck there for like two months due to COVID restrictions. Just three days before they wanted to have the protest, so I was just sleeping. I was just enjoying the sleep and wake up whenever you want. When he said he was going out for it, because I know that um, 
The racism in Ireland is not as bad as the UK. We all know that, thankfully. I knew that it wouldn't be so scary for them to be out. I was more concerned about the social distancing. And since they had told me that the authorities had cleared them to come out and gather, I was fine because I know that the brutality is not always as um, obvious as it happens in America. But mm -hmm. one of his friends, Moyo, the second black boy in the picture, mm -hmm. actually experienced police brutality just last summer. Mm. So, of course, it touched everybody, and, we, and that was partly why they said, now, you know when something, when it feels like it's gotten home, then you, you feel it differently. Or like if they say it happened to somebody so far away. So he went out and came back. He doesn't take pictures like I do. <laughs> so I was asking him, pictures, is there anything that you can show me? Let me see what it was all like. And it was like, I, I, I was more focused on the cross that we went out for. Then luckily, the picture that went out, first of all, was the one with them holding up the signs. It was taken by an event photographer in the town. And it wasn't even the first picture that came up in the 10 pictures he posted on his own page. Right. But it was the first one that everybody used for their email updates on how the protest went. Right. So when they now saw it, his friend, Sean, the white boy, <laughs> how are you both? He now sent a picture of the three of them when they were babies to Kito. and said, isn't this so amazing that the three of us as kids stood together today mm -hmm. as men and that touched Kito, and that was why he posted what he posted wow wow go ahead Michael. um Kito, do you think you made a difference do you think your protest made a difference Ab absolutely like um even just recently the past week i could see me getting a taxi a lot of people have been trying to make conversation as opposed to people who just uh let you like yeah people just let you sit in a car and then take you to their destination but people are trying to understand the, the whole cause and um, locals are always uh waving at you saying hi to you so it, like the immediate difference in the dark has been noticeable hmm. have you been engaged with any government officials in ireland so far have you spoken to any of maybe the, the councillors the mayors so far on this has anything what has happened so far no, trust me that's my next move because <laughs> i said to them i said since they see how much attention you've garnered just by sending out a te text and being able to hold a protest like that then you guys should form an organization where they consider you as very vital when they're trying to address the youth black and white and everything because it's not even going to be about color any longer it's the fact that the youths have united Right. In Dundalk, and they stand for a force. And you know how it is in Nigeria when you're doing politics, the politicians always look for the youth leaders. Right. Mm. So I told them that this is a time for you people to come together so that they would always consult with you, find out right. what your issues are, right. and they have to address your issues if they want you to vote them. You're all about 18 now, mm. so you can vote. Fantastic. You know, right, okay. Okay. Fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm happy the line you just brought it. So I want to ask you on this specific question. How has this protest, how has this thing you just felt led to do this changed your plan and changed your, your view of the future. Do you intend to go into politics now? Are you seeing a, vis a vision of yourself being more organized, organizer in inclined? I, don't, I definitely don't want to go into politics. I want to know, like, the thing is, I st like, with this tweet, I've created a platform, well, a small platform that I wish to expand on because mm -hmm. my passion is entertainment and actually making people laugh, making people just entertained in general. Exactly like my mom. <laughs> so um, essentially, essentially, um, I'm trying to just push out the platform, push out uh, mm. what I'm trying to do on, on the platform that I've created. And also the people in the dock are very talented. Mm. So I'm trying to push out a platform for them, for them in which they can go. Because I feel that everyone in the dock has the ability to change the world just individually. So if right. we can do it together, then it's going to create a very, like a very big impact. Fantastic. I have to wrap up with you, but I, I can't, I would, I would like to wrap up with Lady because I would like to look can at Can I just you ask as, him one question? Okay. How did your sister feel about this protest? She had Toy. Mm. Toy at first, she was so proud. Her friends were sending her the messages. You know, they are on Snapchat. We adults don't do Snap. <laughs> so, of course, all of them were talking about it on Snap. Everybody was claiming him as their younger brother. With them up on my mind, you can't move it. But it was such a thing of pride that our kids did that. Right. And then when it got to a point, Tony now said that when you now start acting as if you can't let go of him, because he's got this celebrity. <laughs> right. Let me, I, have, I, I, want, I have to let you go, but I have to ask this because I see you as um, somebody who has worked with these children. And I'd like you to give a as message. A mother. As a single mother, I want you to give a message to mothers out there who are doing this all by themselves. 
-hmm. You know, I see you and I say, Abiyamo Toto, he's a woman who has worked with her children. So I want you to speak to women who have nobody but this child mm -hmm. that they are raising. Talk to them this moment. Give them a message because you've you, you've raised successful, amazing children. Your mm -hmm. daughter is a makeup artist. She's doing well, well, in, well in, in England. So you you you're obviously proud, and women must hear that people like you exist. So tell us about your success story. One thing I want people to always understand is that women or parents in general, because you could have single male, you know, uh, one family household that where the parents is the guy. What I want you to understand is that we are just vessels through which these children come into the world. In the days that our parents were raising us, there was so much control in how they wanted us to turn out that it was almost as if they were living vicariously through us. In this generation now, there, there should be a certain level of communication and understanding that your, your job is actually to act as a guide and a, an intercessor. Because, you know, I always talk about purple. Once you can find somebody or mentor them enough or spirit, intervene and pray for them enough for them to discover what their God-given purpose is as a parent, your job is to pray, pray, and guide. Okay, I think we can end with that. Thank you very much. Well done, well done, Kiton. Good job. We are proud of you. The your view team is proud of you all. All right. All right, we have to go on a break now. See you after the break. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. You can watch Your View on TVC every Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Nigerian time on DSTV Channel 418, Gold TV Channel 27 and Channel 47, Star Times Channel 121 and Channel 307, Play TV Channel 801 and Channel 190, UHF 49, Sky Channel 515 for UK viewers. Watch live on Facebook at TVC Connect and on our website, tvcentertainment.tv forward slash livestream.